OK, now, with the highly controversial Rwanda deportation plan being appealed at the Supreme Court next month, the government's migration policy is more contentious, perhaps, some could say, than ever before. Well, right now on the programme, we're asking if the Home Office is doing enough for asylum seekers or should the focus be protecting our own borders and keeping people out. Mm. Well, we're joined now by Director of Sanctuary Foundation, Dr Krish Kandaya. Uh, welcome to you. And Security Strategy Specialist um, and President of the Primrose League, Henry Bolton. Good morning to you as well, Henry. Um, let's start with you then, um, Dr Krish Kandaya. Um, we're spending £8 million a day on hotels, but you think we ought to do more for migrants? Well, I don't think we should be spending £8 million a day on hotels. That's money that should be in our foreign aid budget. But the issue there is that we don't have a functioning asylum system. So there's a huge backlog of people that haven't been processed. Uh, and on top of that, we don't let asylum seekers work. A lot of the, the asylum seekers I know would love to work, would love to contribute to the economy. And they don't really have any other choice at the moment except to sit in hotels and wait for their asylum process to be fulfilled. So um, the, the issue is a broken system. I don't think it's a choice of should we help more asylum seekers or should we have more secure borders. I actually think we need more secure borders. Um, I'm a foster parent and what, what we do at home is that we lock the door at night. Um, we have um, a, a protection responsibility as parents to make sure that just not anybody walks in. Um, but my front door is not permanently closed. If we get a call from social services, we open up our door and welcome people in. I think that's a metaphor for the way that our country can is, operate. Is that a message, Henry, that you would take on board, that you would accept that the system is broken, but it should be more flexible than it is? Uh, actually, yes. I mean, it, but going back to the, the original question, are we doing enough? I mean, in terms of the resources and the effort that we're putting in, we're doing a huge amount, eight million a day, put into this problem. Uh, Lord knows how much manpower and so on. I mean, we are doing enough. What we're not doing is doing that in the right way, in a properly organized way, in an effective way. We're not securing our borders properly. We are not looking after the refugees who really need looking after properly. And we are failing in terms of the British public by allowing our economy and our society and our our stable uh, sort of nation here to be exploited by other people um, who have no intention whatsoever of integrating, but simply of, of feeding off it. So we have got to build a system that is efficient, that is practical, that is cost effective. And it, 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 it's, it's simply failing everybody at the moment due to lack of leadership and lack of planning by the government. Failing everybody. Um, where would you start, though? I mean, do you think the argument that was being put forward by uh, Dr Kandaya there about allowing asylum seekers to work while they wait for their case to be heard is a good one? Or do you think actually that would encourage people? It would be a pull factor. It, it would be a pull factor. Look, the reality is, and I think everybody knows this, if they really are honest with themselves, the vast majority of people who cross the channel, for example, are economic migrants. What we have allowed to happen is abuse of a, a, a well-meaning asylum system internationally so, so that economic migrants can now exploit it. Uh, we should not be enabling that to, to deepen further. You know, a principle, and it is not a, a matter of law, but it is just simply a principle of best practice that refugees, real refugees, should seek asylum in the first safe country. Now, you, you'll have heard a lot about that, but there is a reason for it. The reason is to prevent the exploitation of the system internationally mm. by economic migrants. Well, by let's... opening the door to them, mm. we are failing the entire international network of refugees. OK, and in that international system. network so of, of refugees, Chris... The refugees like to return... Yeah, Henry, I just, I just want to, to talk to Chris about the specific uh, type of refugee that he uh, engages with, and that's Ukrainian refugees. So is the philosophy that Henry's talking about, does that apply well to Ukrainian refugees? Are we any better disposed towards Ukrainian refugees mm. than we are from, say, African refugees? We as a country have done an amazing job welcoming Ukrainian refugees. 
And interestingly, they haven't sought sanctuary in the first available country. They've come a long way to the United Kingdom, and we celebrate our incredible hospitality. Around 185,000 Ukrainians have come here and have integrated brilliantly. I was at an event on Saturday, 300 Ukrainians throwing a party for their hosts and their neighbours, wanting to say thank you, they're all working hard. Um, I think there is a disparity. We, we've, we've rolled out the red carpet, quite rightly, for our friends from Ukraine, but we're un willing to do the same for other needy people. I dispute the fact that most migrants are coming because of economic reasons. Some are. Um, I'm a huge fan of the country of Albania. That's the main group where people are coming because of e economics. And actually there is generational poverty in that country. We've got some projects there to try and help people build a life in Albania so they don't make the journey here. But actually it's push factors that are the main reason that people are coming. It's people fleeing war and terror in places like Afghanistan, which I know my uh, colleague here has spent a long time in. And he okay. knows some of the challenges that people are facing there. Guys, we've got to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed.